What's up guys, welcome to another DS1, Dark Souls 1, lore through. Um, this is a voiceover. <clears throat> so, uh, basically did a bunch of farming here, got the paladin set leveled up as I predict that I'm going to need it. Um, for Manus, who I'm not as familiar with. Um... But yeah, we're gonna go now from Ulisil down into the uh, the abyss here, basically, and it's called this area is called um, the Chasm of the Abyss. There's not much to see around here. There's a few things sticking out. Um, so in my opinion, I think that um, Dark Souls is very integrated. And I feel like the DLC and even future um, versions of the game really don't... Like, I feel like... I don't know why there's a crystal lizard here in Ulisil. Um, but um, it could be that crystal lizards exist outside of... Oh, I'm turning human just so I can summon Sif during the boss fight here. Um, and I think I crashed the game here. Nope. Um, but like, I, I predicted that, you know, mimics were related to Seath and um, crystal lizards could be related to Seath. In fact, we only find, with the exception of two chests in Anor Londo, we see that there's weapons put inside of mimics and they turn into ascended weapons. But then in this DLC, it's completely different. It's just random items. It's just mimics are meant to um, to attack you. That's it. Um, I don't know. I thought there was a lot of congruency with it in the base game and it starts to leave in the um, the DLC. <laughs> I just got annihilated there. Um, and then obviously in Dark Souls 2 and Dark Souls 3. Um, and same thing goes for Crystal Lizards. I mean, they certainly could be. I mean, they have Crystal in the name, so it probably, you know, could be related to, um, you know, the primordial crystal that <clears throat> the uh, dragons either found or created um, at the ancient age of ancients, but um, I don't know. Something tells me that uh, that's probably not the best uh, explanation. Um, while I run back to this, let me uh, silence my phone. Sorry about that. Um, so anyway, um, getting back to this episode, um, I'm going to just stick to the left hand side here um, so we can get everything. Um, I roll like, you know, twice as slow with this uh, character, so with this armor, so I was... Uh, I was kind of getting stuck on my roll speed the last couple times here, but, you know. And then we get Dark Bead. Um, but I don't know if we have any good lore. Abyss that sorcery discovered by an illicit sorcerer on the brink of madness. In contrast to standard soul sorceries, abyss sorceries are weighty and inflict physical damage. Perhaps a human soul is closer to matter in its humanity. In Dark Souls 2, they really honed in the whole dark thing. Um, they they made it another type of magic. Um, they uh, they made it something that you had to level up faith and intelligence to to wield effectively. 
um, which I like actually. Um, I, I just did a dark build. Uh, it's super powerful. Like it's it's more powerful than um, sorcery or faith alone, you know, based on the fact that you um, you know you need two stats leveling up. So I mean you're gonna have a more powerful thing, but we'll probably explore that there. There's all these humanity sprites here in the, the abyss, but big life-sized ones. We'll explore that uh, more um, when we start playing Dark Souls 2, though. So, yep, yeah, we're going down here, and I see an image of Alvina here that is quote-unquote directing us. Um, in a direction, you can see that she appears at various intervals. Um, so I'm not exactly sure. I mean, so she leads us to um, Sif. Um, so my only guess, based on the discussion that I mean, that either could be Elvina or another cat. I mean, we saw the other cats, or we will see the other cats in, um, I recorded, yeah, another Loose Ends video after this where I go fight the cats in, uh, in the Dark Root Garden. But that's probably, um, Elvina. And Elvina referenced the fact that she would have known Artorias and Sif herself personally um so anyway there's a shortcut here um and this brings us back to uh, chester the other side of where chester and the artorias boss fight is so i guess this could make it a, a quick shortcut I, i've never really used the shortcut Seems a little unnecessary, but, um, anyway, so I think that, you know, this might be Elvina in the sense that Elvina has mentioned that she knew them personally and that this might be part of the story that she's referring to. I mean, she was the only one that kind of indicated that, uh, the stories of, uh, Artorias might not be as they seem from everyone else. Um, possibly because she was here and she saw us. But we'll get plenty more lore around that whole thing before the DLC is up. We talked to both Elizabeth and Dusk. And they kind of tell us what that's all about. So yeah, obviously these humanity sprites drop humanity. You save all of the ones, and then Sif, who looks like he was surrounded by some sort of aura, howls and then disappears, I guess, to safety, and then drops an item. The Cleansing Great Shield. The steel great shield used by Knight Artorias, who succumbed to the Abyss. Artorias, deeply scarred by the Abyss, used this to form a barrier to protect his compatriot Sif. Although this, dra this drained the shield, its magic defense remains high. So. And we can also see that Sif is a normal size here. Um, something happened between now and when we fight him to make him like quadruple or quintuple in size. My theory, of course, as I've been mentioning, is that I believe that souls, um, maybe not the number of souls as kind of stated in the bottom, but the power of your individual soul leads to the size. I mean, we see that with Sif right here that he, you know, he changed sizes and then we see it. Uh, directly in front of us with Ornstein and Small. So, I don't know, I think that definitely has a lot to do with how the, the quote-unquote soul mechanics work. 
which makes me always like, why don't we get bigger? I mean, it wouldn't be a good gameplay mechanic, but I'm just one, you know, if that were the case, then we should be getting bigger this whole time, especially since we get powerful enough to, you know, defeat Gwyn. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of the main way you go. Um, and you go down, down there. Uh, to the boss fight, and it's always nice to come up and kill that sorcerer beforehand, because she can be a bit of a bit annoying. Or he, I don't know. So I don't know, there might be an item that I missed back when I fell through that cliff that was like an illusion before getting the Sif, because I didn't turn back. Um... <clears throat> Let me know if there's something over there. But, um, we're just going to explore the rest of this area. I can never get a bearing of where I'm at in this place because it kind of, it's all black, obviously, but it also like loops around on itself a lot. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if these represent the people of Ulusil, or if this is just how the abyss manifests itself. But, um... <laughs> I think it looks really cool. We never really fought anything like it sense in any game. Uh, so I got a dark pyromancy. I didn't realize until... There we go. Black Flame. A pyromancy discovered uh, from the dark of the abyss by a pyromancer who wandered into Ulusil. Black Flames are weighty and inflict physical damage enough to smack away the mightiest of shields. So uh, as well as a uh, Upon a sorcerer, there's also a pyromancer walking around, although he doesn't seem to be from um, Ulusil, as I think in the last episode we'll, we'll read the pyromancer gear that I missed in this playthrough, and we learned that pyromancers were kind of banished from the Great Swamp and traveled a lot, so I guess it makes sense, although I don't know how that reflects this time, the ancient times. This guy's kind of swarmy, so it's a little bit annoying, but I think I, uh, I think I take care of everything with relative ease. Um, it seems like, I mean, so there's, there's sizes of humanity here, or I don't even know what they are because, I mean, we obviously have humanity since the beginning of the game as a consumable item and we know that humanity is like the dark soul split up and kind of represents you know it's part of what makes us human or whatever is to have humanity as a thing as a measurable thing and, um, yet, okay, and then here's the help me carving. Head carved by the archers by Goth. Oh, so I did that. This head says help me. Help me. Um, and I make a stupid mistake here. I just get pushed over just slightly. Um, but like, so humanity is kind of a measurable quality of a person. Um, the thing that distinguishes us from hollows, and yet, okay, this must be where I crash. Got my Bloodborne background right there.
Um, but yeah, so with humanity being as, as the way we understand it, now we have physical representations of the humanity. I don't know. I don't know what that means. <laughs> I feel like the DLC, although tightens up some stuff with like the four knights, we get to meet all the four knights, which is cool. And we get to learn about, you know, Ulusil, which is obviously planned out before Dark Root Garden to a certain extent. Um, I don't know. I think it does start to take some risks. I'm actually not sure how directly Miyazaki was involved with this, if or if that matters. Um, so, anyway, back into the fray. Um, sure why I need to get my, uh, oh my god, <laughs> that was so scary, um, I forgot about that, I'm not sure why we need to get our souls, it's 7,000, I mean, at this point, I'm not really sure what we're gonna be, uh, using 7,000 for. And of course, now I realize that where I'm dropping down to is where I cleared out earlier, so this is now just me jumping into a, a group of enemies. I don't see another way out, so just try to make it good. I very narrowly <laughs> escape at least a lot of pain, if not death. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to kind of tank damage with these guys because, you know, they don't attack and they just need to be by you. <laughs> So, alright, um, but this is also nice because now I can go up and uh, get behind that sorcerer that always throws me for a loop whenever I come back to the boss. This looks terrifying. <laughs> like if this were real life, walking down a pillar like this into the abyss it just doesn't look like it's balanced very well, in my opinion. Um, well, we can see the boss fog from here. Um, trying to figure out which is like the way of no return. I realized that. <clears throat> I should go this way first to get the item. Um, so yeah, this is... I think it's the white Titanite slab. With the blue Titanite slab in the Royal Wood. The DLCs are always good for that. Always good for uh, materials and stuff. So. So yeah, one interesting thing here is that Sif's uh, summon sign is inside the uh, boss fight. I don't think that's ever happened again. Um, and uh, I try to grab it here. Get some more humanity. Dot. He's just dancing around me, playing me like a fiddle. 
get a little bit more humanity, which is always nice. Never have too little. Or too much, I should say. Alright, well. <laughs> Let's try Manus. So it goes down even further into nothingness. And just like the beginning of the DLC, a big hand comes and grabs us from there and brings us down apparently infinitely deep. Well, I don't know, I just said that, but. So this is Primeval Man. Uh, this is a a warped version of of man that the town of Ulusil brought back to life on Cod's orders. Um, it is interesting, it has very similar things to uh, the rest of um, Ulusil. Um, those sorcerers and those hollows that kind of flip their arms up have the red eyes on there. They have like multiple red eyes. I am just trying to find Sith's, Sith's, um, or Sith's Great timing. Um, I'm trying to find Sith's, um, summon sign when I find it. And of course, <laughs> he hits me. So I summon him and immediately get killed. <laughs> So you'll just have to imagine in your mind Sif um, fighting in this in this fight because I do not try to summon him again. I remember I played the DLC like after I'd played the game. In other words, I had played and beat the game and gone on to other games and then kind of you know getting back into the series uh, specifically number one I was like I need to play the first DLC because I've never played that and blah 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 so when I played it I remember playing Manus for the first time this gets a little iffy by the way um this this guy comes down like normal, but what I don't think is normal, at least for any other playthrough, is that those humanities swarm you. As I say, there's always been something a little off from my memory in this playthrough, so... Um, anyway, so when I came back and played this, I played Manus um, a bunch of times. I mean, Manus was the hardest boss I had ever played. Um... And I remember I felt so accomplished by it. I guess he still is up there for um, when people rate hardest bosses. The thing that I do here in this playthrough is that I actually effectively use the silver pendant, which I've never even attempted. I think I watched someone use it once on, one of a, on a YouTube video. But, um, I, I usually have problems with a few steps in this fight, and they all involve the dark that Manus um, spits. So yeah, you can see he's got the red eyes, similar to the way that the people in Illusil did. He also has a tail, which I don't think you can cut off. So I get the silver pendant ready. So yeah, this is a... You get stuck in that. Um, that's like a... He'll like juggle you, basically. And that's really hard to get out. He uh, bleeds, which makes sense. Yeah, so I get caught by... I didn't realize he turns around so quickly, but actually doesn't do a ton of damage, so I'm okay.
okay with it. Alright. Yeah, so then he bleeds really easily, actually. Two hits makes him bleed. So, yeah. <laughs> Just in time. And it surrounds you for a little bit. It's awesome. Almost nearly uh, get hit by something else. But uh, yeah, I wish you could cut his tail off. That'd be cool. I mean, it'd be hard, I guess, in my estimation. So I'm glad I have a good amount of dark defense because I think usually that kills me if I tank that. And so. That was almost it, right there. And of course I tank that, which is not common. I figure instead of being greedy, I'm gonna try and... I mean, I'm a little greedy. But it pays off. Manus, father of the abyss. Primeval human. And like the uh, crystal golem, dusk falls out of her. Yeah, him. It. I immediately put my crimson robe back on. I feel dirty with the paladin on. I need to roll fast. So yeah, here's dusk. And she seems very... <laughs> she... Doesn't seem herself. She was scarred by Manus. So we get a little bonfire down here. And we're gonna do a couple things before the game is through. I attempt to fight Calamite, um, just to kind of like show the fighting. I don't beat him though, just because I'm not that familiar with his with the fight. So I read his item in the final episode. So um, do we just read Solomon's? Did I just space out? <clears throat> I'm just trying to level up. Yeah, I want a little bit more health. Although, man, this is probably the hardest boss at this point in the game. So. Hmm, I think I didn't read Manus's uh, soul yet, but I could have looked away. I don't know. So yeah, now I think I'm going to go back and talk to Chester, and I think I try to kill Chester. Although... I'm surprised he doesn't have anything to say about that. Um, because he talks about Manus. So long. Um... I guess I don't kill him. Um, so, probably gonna go talk to Goth at this point. So, in the previous episode, going through the township, we found in a mimic chest a crest key. Um, which I thought maybe was the crest of Artorias or the crest of 
the knights or crest of Gwyn or I don't know some sort of crest on it maybe the crest of goth there's more of these statues holding the Lilithsel Ivor Catalyst standing around and uh, yeah, there's not really any crest on the door now we go talk to which what might be one of my favorite characters in the game, especially after this playthrough. I thought he was just very fascinating. But yeah, he's uh, trapped up there, probably because he can't even physically escape. And here's his, he's carving the heads at this point, no longer the arrows. You can see the various stages of production. He has the logs up here. And then he cuts those down to little half logs. Also, his great bow is just huge. And then the half logs into heads. <clears throat> oh, I was just saying, okay. Soul of Manus, Father Abyss. This extraordinary soul is a viscous, lukewarm lump of gentle humanity. Ancient Manus was clearly once human, but he became the father of the Abyss after his humanity went wild, eternally seeking his precious broken pendant. So yeah, this indicates to us that humanity, you can have too much humanity, um, or that you use humanity a certain way. It also says that he was looking for his broken pendant. We had the broken pendant to get here. There was... He was broken in half, though, and there's two, and I think the other person to have the other one is uh, Chester, because he's here from the past. But it is interesting that there's also a silver pendant from Victorious that blocks dark, so it's like the antithesis to Manus' pendant. Um, but yeah. I was also, yeah, <laughs> I keep forgetting here, too. So we found the hawk ring. Uh, which is Goth's ring inside the, um, behind the blacksmith in Orlando, which we'll see that that's not a coincidence. Although he is much bigger than that blacksmith. Mm, a visitor have we. Thou must be the one who freed Artorius. An old friend he was. Thanks to thee, he left this world with honor intact. And here I am, retired and blind. A little help to thee, I'm afraid. So he's blind. Um, we might learn a little bit later why he's blind, or whether he is blind, or whether he thinks he's blind. We'll get some insight into that later. But he obviously wasn't blind his whole life. If thou seeketh to explore this domain, be wary of a black dragon. I fear thee no match for this terrible beast. Me, mm, there's very little to be said. What good is a dog with no hairs to hunt? But I'm lucky to be alive, I suppose. Me. Mm. So, he has a couple things. He has the hello carving and the thank you carving, which we're just going to buy, because why not? He sells the same stuff as the blacksmith in Anilando, except for the twinkling, which he got from Seath anyway, so that wouldn't be around in this time. Um, and goes Great Arrow. Great Arrow used by Hawkeye Goth, one of the Lord Gwyn's four knights for dragon slaying. Goth personally crafts each stone tip and wraps the shaft tightly with tree bark. Farewell, human. Lead thy life as thou seest fit. <laughs> so, anyway, the reason I was saying that he's just become blind is just the way he says that. Um, I'm retired and blind, as in these are new things. Um, but of course, maybe he was blind, and then maybe the thing that happens that we'll, when we read his stuff on his set will um, maybe that was just on top of I don't know it seems to me like he wasn't blind and he still isn't blind um, just because when we read his set in a couple episodes 
His eye holes were packed with tree resin. Um. Okay, now I think I fight Chester. Oh, it's come to blows, has it? Fine then. I've had enough of you anyway. So I don't want to knock him off, although this ends up being my downfall. And then when I do fight him another time. I knock him off. I also try parrying. Ooh. <laughs> I wonder if that is that an item in Dark Souls, the three, the Kukri or whatever is in Dark Souls 3, where you can throw the three um, daggers or whatever. I don't know. Whatever he just did there. I think he was fighting with the sniper rifle as well. Looks, uh, I'm not sure. Um, but when I go through items in the last episode, I look at the sniper and it looks similar. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I try to parry his, uh, his foot attack. Doesn't work. Although he talks mid-battle, which is cool. I'm trying not to knock him off, but eventually it's just like, I can't help it. Just get out. And he does drop an item. Well, a set of items, but is down there. And that's where we're going anyway. So it's all well and good. It would be cool if he dropped the other part of the broken pendant, but he doesn't. Maybe he lost it. I don't know. And of course, there's dogs in this area. And if you've watched any of my previous episodes, you know that I don't. I'm not a fan of dogs. I mean, they're not like. I just don't like them. Like, it's not like I can't take care of them. It's not that they're not theoretically easy to kill. They just seem to be built in a way that's annoying, and I hate it. <laughs> so anyway, here's all of Chester's stuff. And we get a soul. Alright. Black top hat worn by Marvelous Chester, a man of mystery lost in the past. The wearer of this top hat cracks is a dubious permanent grin. The curse of Chester. Black leather long coat hat worn by Marvelous Chester. This exquisitely sewn aristocratic suit allows its wearer to move in silence, lending all the stealth. This is my favorite description of the gloves. These gloves have no distinguishing features. <laughs> These item exclusively sewn trousers are decorated with silver trinkets of varying sizes and having straps on the inner legs for carrying crossbow bolts. So it doesn't tell us much about Chester. It tells us that his name is Chester and it's cool to dress up like him, but um, yeah. And you can see here that there's been some lumbering going on here. I'm not sure if this is for, like, what, Go or Goth. <laughs> I say Go because that's how I know him. Um, just from people that I watch, they say Go because the Japanese is Go. There's Smo and there's Go, you know. But when they translate it to English, they said Goth. I mean, we even have Van Go. That's how we pronounce that. Danish? Or Netherlandish name? Um. Then I was like, oh, maybe those are for goth. But then I see that there's like a construction of wood here, um, which it could just be that some people are, you know, crafting this door or this area. Um crafting the gate or whatever. I'm not sure. So yeah, there's 
the black dragon Goth spoke about and we saw earlier. Um, so this area is where we fought the Hydra uh, in Dark Root Garden. I mean, the layout's a little different. You know, things have changed a little bit. Like this is not as tall of a ladder, I think. And but there's this waterfall that we pass, and so yeah, right there, like around. That's the ladder where the cats are. And then we fight the crystal golem down that way, and then the hydra there. I mean, it's a little different. And then over here is where all the crystal guys are, and then Havel up to the left. Which means that... I'm going to get killed by Calamine here. I'm trying to avoid it just in case I can. Um, I'm sure you can. Um, but that means that the, the castle that was being built for Lordran that we, you know, the undead burg, it's not present in Ulusil time. However, Anorlando is. Because we can see Anorlando in the very first episode coming out of the sanctuary. So, just an interesting thing to keep in mind. Anyway, you're supposed to go and die, or at least try to fight Calamite. I think you can escape um, and then talk to Goth. And this leads to one of my favorite sequences of the DLC, for sure. Both the conversation and the cinematic. There's a pile of chi wood chips Good out there. Is the black dragon posing the duress? I like how you have an option here. Yes. I thought as much. He's called Calamit. Ferocious dragon indeed, even mighty Anna Londa dared not provoke his eye. He mentions Anna Londa I here. see little good coming from this, but my intent is to persevere to the bitter end. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm not going to kill Calamite, but... <laughs> good, good. What is bravery without a dash of recklessness? I've taken a liking to thee, and I owe thee much for thy service to Artorius. Now, watch, and see how Goth hunts dragons. He has to look for his uh, bow because he can't see. He has to feel around for his bow. was never loosed. That bat will be grounded for a good spell. The rest is in thine hands. I await good tidings. Ah, dragon slaying. Knighthood's highest calling. It's cool, ah, it? Hello there. What? Of Calamity. I like to see him in he his is prime. An ancient dragon. Skyward or no, he will not be put down easily. Dragons shall never be forgotten. We knights fought valiantly, but for every one of them, we lost three score of our own. Exhilaration. Pride. Hatred, rage. The dragons teased out our dearest emotions. Thou will understand one day. 
Look at twilight, old thoughts return, and great waves of nostalgia. I suspect thou hast taken a gander at it, but the dark of the abyss, which swallowed poor Artorius, threatens to devour our entire land of Ulysseo. It seems that this dire fate is unavoidable, but, seduced by a dark serpent or no, they awoke that thing themselves and drove it mad. One's demise is always one's own making. He mentions the dark serpent, Koth, seducing people to raise it again, but he says they did raise it and they made it go mad, which is uh, not... Do not mistake my words. I cherish my work. Wood carving is a nuanced art. I would have much to talk about with that blacksmith. In truth, how is the old chap, I wonder? Still hammering away, I should hope. Farewell, human. I await good tidings. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think he just became my favorite character after that speech or whatever. I, you know, they say I'm less familiar with the uh, DLC than the other stuff, so it was uh, a good reminder of how awesome of a character he was. Um, <clears throat> I was saying before that, yeah, they, you know, he's saying that. Um, they drove it mad, and then it didn't matter what Koth says. In fact, Koth could could have had good intentions. Uh, I mean, the DLC seems to paint Koth as evil and trying to do evil. Um, we'll read a couple things later in the item descriptions that I don't have, and I realized something in the final episode, but I'll just leave that uh, for then. Um, but it's kind of a cool little element that I guess I never really understood, but I just I got to a... Uh, item description that made sense to me, and uh, then a lot of things became clear about what Koth is doing, and, and what Artorius' fate really was. So as I say, uh, you know, we're getting on with the episode here, and I didn't want to make another episode, because I was just anxious to finish this series up. And I don't see this as being completely essential uh, for lore, although I'll probably talk to Goth after killing Calamine. He probably has some great things to say, but I give it a good go. Well, not a good go, but I give it a go and uh, end up... Uh, so yeah, now that he's shot Calamine, now he's grounded. Does he not have the arrow sticking out of him? Like, I was thinking, um, like, Sing or whatever in uh, Dark Souls 2, he had, like, has an arrow stuck in him. But I guess he broke it off already. So yeah, my demise here basically is that I, um, I get hit by his calamity grab, and I mean, that's it. It's over when that happens. For me. He does this hitting thing a lot. That's the threat of him being under him, is <laughs> he'll just do that move and I wasn't aware. But I feel I still feel like I'm relatively good. But yeah, I just get grabbed by the calamity, which is just, you know. I 
do double damage once I get the Calamity on there and that eye above me indicates that. So I try my best to heal, but of course every hit now. I mean, I could have avoided those. I don't know. Um, perhaps I'll do another series of Dark Souls where I take more of a completionist route and spend less time on lore and more just on playing and stuff. But uh, anyway, um, now I'm going to go talk to uh, Elizabeth so I can get her thoughts on saving dusk and whatnot. I have awaited thee. Thou hast rescued Princess Dusk, and rid us of that terrible primeval human. Even halting the spread of the abyss, I salute the grandeur of thine enterprise. Please allow me to express my gratitude. I thank thee, as do we all. I will remember thee, but I will keep thy story to myself. This is the best way, for thou art come from a time far ahead. No one will sing thy praises, but yet thy greatness shall live on, for it shall be my purpose to remember all thou hast done for us. So yeah, she's saying that she, she won't tell people because we came from the past, basically. It's an interesting choice, <laughs> but it makes sense. <laughs> the other thing that uh, I haven't properly mentioned was that she May the flame. and I and she doesn't drop anything Why? but I killed Why? her just, yeah, it does. Uh... yeah I don't know um she's a mushroom and we obviously see mushrooms in you know the darker garden and such as well as Ash Lake so that's kind of interesting but um I don't know if that has much consequence or not. But anyway, um, thanks for watching, and we'll do some loose ends, and then a final kiln and, and item read uh, in the last episode. Uh, thanks for watching my first series. Uh, well, I guess I shouldn't thank you here, but I don't think I thank you at the end of that episode. But this is the last thing I'm recording, so thanks. Bye.